I'm going to take a few minutes and go through the calculations that are part of this uh, molar volume of hydrogen lamb that we did. Uh, the calculations are sometimes a little bit tricky, so we'll work on them together. Uh, from the data, okay, things that you should be uh, having your data here, we did measure one uh, meter of magnesium and found out that it weighed 1.25 grams. Okay, the uh, room pressure for the day was 745.2. And the room temperature was 23 degrees Celsius. And these are the numbers that we're going to use, although during your period uh, you might have had a slightly different uh, room pressure. I think the temperature stayed constant all day. Now, as far as your data, okay, your data is going to be slightly different. So I'm using uh, one person's data where their magnesium was 3.51 centimeters long. And when they got done collecting their gas, it came out to be 44.3 milliliters. So those numbers are going to be slightly different for each person's uh, data. And we used uh, different size ribbons in different periods. Now the first one is over here where it says, uh, what is the uh, vapor pressure, equilibrium vapor pressure of water at today's temperature? So we just use that from the chart, same chart that we used in the... Uh, uh, Pre-lab, same chart we used on the quiz. The problem here is that this chart doesn't really go up quite high enough because we need the next number, 23.0. So we're just going to go back and estimate. From uh, 22 to 23, that's a difference of 0.6. So this will also be a difference of 0.6. 20.4 plus 0.6 would make 21.0. So that's millimeters of mercury. So that's a number that we're going to use as our pressure due just to the water. So we're going to need that number. First one here says write a balanced equation, chemical equation. Well, we've done this a lot. So we know that magnesium plus 2 hydrochloric acid turns into hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride. And the reason we want this is for the heart of the problem which says that for every one mole of magnesium, we get one mole of hydrogen. Okay, second part, calculate the moles of hydrogen. If we begin with our length of ribbon, so we are going to do this. We have 3.51 centimeters of magnesium, and we know that there's 100 centimeters in one meter of magnesium. Because we uh, weighed this, we know that one meter of magnesium is 1.25 grams of magnesium and we know that there's 24.31 grams in one mole of magnesium and that's from the periodic table and then from our balanced equation above we know that one mole of magnesium gives us one mole of hydrogen gas. Now I'm going to calculate the value, but keep in mind this number here will be different for probably your data, but everything else should be constant, could be would be consistent. You could use that information. So I'm going to pause and calculate. I get a value here of 0 0.00180. That's moles of hydrogen. Okay, we're going to need that number as we work through. Show your calculation for the partial pressure of hydrogen gas inside the tube. This is the pressure you should use for the room pressure of the hydrogen gas, so we'll need that in question four. Um, note that the, another definition for partial pressure uh, is the partial pressure of hydrogen gas would exert if it were alone in the tube. Okay, so we have our tube and we collected it when the uh, liquid level inside the tube and outside the tube were the same. So we were saying that inside the tube there was lots of hydrogen and that there was a little bit of water vapor. So there's pressure due to the water and there's pressure due to the hydrogen. 
and that since we measured this at uh, when these two levels here were the same, then we have the pressure due to air. So our final equation here is that the pressure due to the air is equal to the pressure due to the hydrogen plus the pressure due to the water. And what we want to know is what is the pressure of the hydrogen. So that's going to be the pressure of the air minus the pressure due to the that's wrong. Uh, minus the pressure due to the water vapor. Now going back to our data, the pressure due to the air is 745.2 and that's millimeters of mercury. And the pressure due to the water we saw there was 21.0 and we got that from our chart and I'm going to take a moment here and uh, calculate that so what we're going to end up with is one from there should be 724.2 millimeters of mercury Now the saying is that if these little red dots here, if these were alone inside this tube, the pressure would be 724.2. So this is the partial pressure of hydrogen, which is the pressure that the hydrogen would exert if it were by itself inside that tube, 724.2. So we're going to use that in our uh, PV over T equals PV over T calculation. Now calculate the volume of hydrogen that you would have obtained if you had done one mole of magnesium ribbon. Okay, and report your answer in liters. So there's two things to do. Well, going back to our data, we are saying that we had 44.3 milliliters for this volume. So 44.3 milliliters of gas, that was our volume when we had 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.00180 moles. So we've got that many milliliters for this many moles. Okay, how many milliliters would we have if we had done one mole? So mathematically we're correcting for the fact that we're not doing one whole mole. So uh, let me take a moment and calculate that. Okay, for me I get a value here of 24,611 milliliters. Now that's too many significant figures, but I can round that off later. Now that's in milliliters, so if I want to get turn that into liters, I'm just going to move my decimal place over three places. So that's going to equal 24.6 liters. So I've done the two parts of this. One is what would my value be if I had a mole? and then I change my milliliters into liters. Now this one here is uh, going to be P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. Now let's kind of keep sorting out our data here. Let's do the STP stuff first. Okay the molar volume that's what we're looking for. Okay the temperature uh, is 273 and the pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury and those are just defined values of STP so that part's easy. Now our molar volume that's the value we just had 24.6 that seems a little bit small. Uh, the room temperature we'll go back to our data and the room temperature was 23 degrees Celsius, but of course we want to add 273, so we do this in Kelvin, and that would be 6 and 9, 296 Kelvin. So this is 296. And the pressure is the pressure that this gas would have if it were all by itself. 
So 724.2. And that's in millimeters of mercury. So we can see that this value here came from our question number four, where we adjusted for one mole. Uh, this is from our data, change into Kelvin. And this is from answer three, where we calculated the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas. So now we're going to go back and substitute it in and calculate. So P1 is, I have to be careful here, 724.2 millimeters of mercury times the volume which is 24.6 liters divided by the temperature in Kelvin which is 296 Kelvin equals okay, the new pressure which was 760 millimeters of mercury times X that's our volume divided by the new temperature 273 Kelvin. So now we have to do is solve for X. Okay, I'm going to pause and do my calculation. Now I've done my calculation and what I did was 724.2 times 24.6 times 273 divided by 296 and 760. So I'm just basically cross multiplying and I get a value of 21.6 uh, 21.619 so I'll leave it 21.6 liters so for me that is the volume of my gas if I were at STP now um, know that the actual value is 22.4 so I'm going to find my percent error and if you remember our percent error formula is you want to say how much are we off so 22.4 liters minus the value I had which is 21.6 liters divided by what it's supposed to be which is 22.4 liters times 100 we're going to get a value for that now when I do this calculation I get a percent error of about 3.57 let's call it 3.6 percent error and my number is a little bit too low okay now that's not bad you know within five percent I think that that's perfectly acceptable now number seven we want to go back and we want to uh, share everybody's data so the uh, number that we got for our volume okay which was back in question five 21.6 so we're going to put 21.6 and our percent error was 3.6 and uh, that's a little bit low my value is low so I'm going to call that negative 3.6 so we're going to go back and uh, talk to everybody and find out how they did now the other part we want to do is to take everybody's data and to kind of plot it out so there's minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 so we're going to put a little dot right about here or star and um, we're going to find out if everybody's values are clustered in one place then we know that we're precise okay if everybody gets values right around you know zero percent error then we know we're accurate so we'll just be able to look at our class data and decide how accurate how precise and that was back from unit two ideas so that's how we do our calculations and we've gone through a lot of stuff you can go back and forth on this until it all makes sense and Good luck. See you in class.